Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. This is a rapid recharge and hopefully, yes, half the sky. Thank you, thank you. We were talking beforehand and uh, little Larry Johnny got it for me. Half the sky had nothing to do with foot feet, but you're making an impact. Anyway, you guys should read that book. I'll put it in the show notes if anybody cares. We were talking about Amazon has this smile.amazon.com. Did you know that if you're purchasing stuff, you probably are going to purchase stuff on Black Friday or sometime during the holidays. It doesn't even have to be during the holidays. It's all year round. They give money to a nonprofit that you believe in. And you go to smile.amazon.com and uh, they are able and they've raised through all the people doing this $105 million. I don't remember what the sense was, but that's a lot of money to raise. So I give this to this Kiva micro funds, which they're funding um, anybody, but they also fund a lot of women who are, oh, Patricia got it first. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I did. I can't read that fast, I guess. Um, it was a common read. Uh, a lot of times universities will do this thing where they'll have the students read a book in certain classes like multiple classes and then they'll do a project or they'll do something. And so we call it a common read. A lot of universities do that. Um, we've done mouse, um, M A U S, which is a, you know, a graphic novel. We've done other ones too. Uh, but this one was one maybe like six years ago, but it was really good. It's a really good book. I listened to it. Uh, I didn't read it, read it. Not that reading a book is bad, but we're going to talk about two books I did actually read. Well, listen to. I started reading one and I have, you know, because I packed, I thought we were moving and then we weren't moving. So um, I don't know if we're going to move. We have two houses. We can, it is one of my favorite as well. Oh, I will, I will have a design book recommendation. Amber, I think that's great. Um, a great idea. I will put that on my resources page and I will also put it on the, sh in the show notes. I'm going to, make myself a note. Um, so this is why I love doing these so that I can actually um, see what you guys want. Anyway, so we got some exciting news, um, or to me, it's exciting. Um, so this is episode 277. I don't know how many rapid recharges I've done. Not even 10. I don't think I'm really bad about it. I try to do one one a month, but I end up giving it to somebody else or, or something at some point because I have a guest that I think would be better than me talking about this. But I'm going to start this kind of, I'm really trying to commit to this in 2019. And you know, we really only have um, three episodes left of this year. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about those at the end. But what I've been learning, so this year has been really, um, uh, I thought it was going to be amazing and then stuff doesn't always go the way you, it was not that it wasn't amazing. It just wasn't amazing the way I thought it was going to be. So I had a sabbatical. I have not had a sabbatical. Sabbatical means it's not like you take time off and you go to the beach and you just kick around. Um, you actually have a project and you're supposed to be working on that project. And that project has to impact your teaching or your research in some way. And that's how you get a sabbatical. So you're given a sabbatical. A sabbatical could be you get paid for a full semester without having to do any committee work or any uh, teaching, things like that. I don't have to advise all the stuff that goes with just normal. You're kind of out for a little bit, but you're supposed to be working on this project. And so mine was an illustration project. And I thought, oh man, I am just going to rock it. And I had all these ideas and I had taken, bought some classes that I needed, I wanted to go through and do all the work for. And it just didn't happen the way I wanted it to be. So I got sick, really sick. Um, I got sick right before Christmas and then I was still sick. Um, and so like, and it lasted for like three weeks. So four weeks total, if you include the week of Christmas. So I started the year off horizontally and that was not how I intended. And if you know me, if you've been here long enough, you know that hopefully maybe, you know, I have a good bit of energy. And so it was really frustrating for me. I could only really read and like book, like a read, read, or go through a magazine. But I really had like a low kind of, I didn't really want to watch TV. I really wanted to work, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. And so it just, 
it was just a downer for me. And like I was starting this new, this sabbatical, you know, ah, and it was just kind of like it, it didn't happen the way I thought it was. So I did get an opportunity. My pastor gave me an opportunity to do this illustration, which sometimes I think you just need somebody else to believe in you to do something. So I was trying to do, I like to draw people a lot, but I don't really have a a style yet. And I don't have an application. So he said, do whatever. And so I did a lettering. It was lettering and a thing. I know I've shared it with you guys. It was like, where's Jesus on one side? And it said, slow down on the other. It was a coaster. My husband thought it said how down because I wrote the S kind of funny, but anyway, it's okay. Um, and so obviously January wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And then not that February or April or March or whatever. I know what order I know. I just messed up the order, but it wasn't like I thought it was going to be. It was just very different than I thought. And so I ended up and I am addicted to being busy. Um, Brene Brown talks about this. I don't know in which book, but she does talk about this. And that instead of necessarily, and I don't know if you guys as with side projects or entrepreneurially on your stuff, is that sometimes it's, it's hard to do some of that, that hard work, right? The stuff that's going to take longer, the stuff that maybe has to do with writing or planning or strategy. We can do it for other people, but it's really hard to do it for ourselves. So when stuff gets really hard, sometimes I just get blinded. So with, I would stand at my, I have a desk very similar to this desk that I'm standing at right now, but I have it at home and it's like a big drafting table, like an architect's table. Hey, Scott, um, what I ended up doing was I would stand at the table after I got well, I would stand at the table and nothing would happen. I would try to move some things around doing some collage or try to, and I felt like everything I was making was just yuck, just ugly. And I know you have to make a mess. Like I know that there's that whole thing, but I really have a problem making a mess and I have a problem playing. I, because I just don't give myself the break to do that. Hey Mara, um, happy Thanksgiving. So to me, this was a, uh, a mental struggle. It, the sabbatical was not necessarily what I thought. I'm not sure if I will take another sabbatical because it was, it was that hard. But I, so while I was sick and laying down, I was reading this book that I had gotten, I think in 1999, some of you maybe weren't born. Yet. I'm just kidding. Um, but you were close, right? Working on being a single tasker is tough. Uh, Patricia says, absolutely. So what I was doing was I was reading this book called Finding Your Own North Star. In this book, I had heard about it. Martha Beck, um, I'm going to share the link. Um, Martha Beck had been on Oprah. And that's right. On the show, Oprah, Um so this was like when Oprah still had like a daytime <laughs> TV show. So Amber was eight. She didn't even know who Oprah was, right? This is the link. This is the book. It's kind of a thick book. There's like a, uh, a work, there's worksheets. And if you get the PDF, like if you get the audio book, you can download the PDF. So it's there. But she got on there and I don't know why, but it was so impactful that I've got that book and I started reading it then, but I didn't finish it. And so then I've actually been reading it up until maybe two weeks ago. I finished it. So I've read other books in between. I read Elizabeth Gilbert's uh, Big Magic, which I was not a huge fan of Elizabeth Gilbert's um, Eat, Pray, Love. And so I was kind of like, Meh. so, but then this girl that I met at this conference, Amy, she was a little, she's super cute. I mean, she, there were, we were like two twins, except she had brown hair and I have blonde hair and she had a lot of energy too. And she was like, you need to read this book. And I was like, okay, I'm going to trust you. I said, why, why do you, is it so good? And she said, I've read it. Five, I'm on my fifth time reading it. And to me, that says something. If you're going to read something five times, that really really was it. So I haven't even, I didn't even know there was a big magic podcast, Nikki. I'm going to have to uh, put that in the show notes. Um, anyway, it was terrific. Like it opened my eyes and I feel like, you know, sometimes you'll, 
you'll do one thing and then something else in your life that's completely not related. It's, it was like perfect timing that you were reading these both together or doing these two things. That's what it was like. I was, I read big magic in maybe two weeks, I mean, listen to it. Um, in two weeks. Cause I just really committed. I was really good. I really enjoyed it and I was getting a lot out of it. But what I got from the finding your own North star was there are these four quadrants and that's why the graphic that I did this week was these four quadrants. So I'm going to tell you, so number one, quadrant one, and to be honest, I haven't even really gotten to quadrant four, but quadrant one, one, my, anyway, I can't talk today. Quadrant one is an opportunity or a tragedy. So there's some catalytic event and it, something happens that forces you into square one. And I think there's grief in square one to me standing at my table, not being able to do anything. There was grief, but there was also grief. There was this loss. You have to say, okay, the old life, I have a new opportunity. I'm going to go forward. Um, it, so sometimes number one, I, you know, it's probably like acceptance in Al-Anon or, or AA or whatever, you know, you're accepting that you're in the situation. And then number two, phase two, square two, quadrant two is dreaming. She calls it dreaming and scheming. And I call, I call it uh, just the dreaming. To me, sometimes I can dream really, really, really well but I have problems with action, which is number three. Quadrant three is action. But sometimes I really have problems dreaming. And I think dreaming is the, the play stage. So if I'm saying this to you, so I think all of us experience something at different times in quadrant one, but then some of us really live more life. If we're talking about our business or a style we're trying to do or, or pushing ourselves creatively, we kind of either live in quadrant two or we live in quadrant three. Meaning some of us are really like me being busy. I like to be in action, right? I like taking action. But there's a time when it would be better if I was doing more of a strategy or something more long game than um, making some little busy work thing that I have to do for, uh, for a client or, you know, something that I could get an intern to do. So instead of doing these little things, really it would be better use of my time to do one of these bigger things. But I put off the bigger things, right? A lot of people do that, but I have ideas. I, the ideas are there. I spend a lot of time in number two with other people talking out the things that I want to do. Anyway, you guys maybe are there with me or not, but nobody's coming, so I really don't know. I feel like the internet broke a little bit, but I still see you there. You're just not saying anything, but that's okay. Okay, Amber, thank you. Okay, so so do you think you spend more time in quadrant two in regards to your business dreaming? <laughs> thank you, Patricia. She says she's actively listening, and then she gave me a wink. Um, do you think you're you are dreaming about your side project or dreaming about your business, and you have trouble in action steps? Or do you feel like you're like me as I don't even give myself time to dream or plan or strategize and really strategize going down to the nitty gritty, right? And because I'm just, I feel, because I want to feel like I'm crossing things off my list on a daily basis. So you spend time in, in block three if you are um, an actioner, I guess. Um, I don't, she doesn't say that call it. She didn't call it that. And then she takes you to the promised land, which I'm not there yet. So I don't really know anything about the promised land to be honest. That's her quadrant for Martha Beck's in finding your, um, <laughs> Amber says she does like completing lists and a uh, little Larry Johnny says dreaming little action. I'm drained after work and the kids. stuff. Okay. So this is what she would say. She would say, put things into tiny doable actions. So especially if it's hard to do. So uh, I am completely with you. Some things are just massive that you're like, oh my goodness, it's going to take forever to do. She would say, break one thing down and just do the one thing. 
just have that even if things only 15 minutes you just don't want to do it you just don't know really how long it's going to take but if it was only 15 minutes you're going to give yourself an hour to do this 15 minute task and maybe you get up early or maybe you just do the fifth you have to call someone right and that's it you just call them that was the only thing you're going to do today because you're really avoiding that thing and avoiding that thing doesn't help you get the one step but really what you need to do is create this itty bitty list of all the little things that go into it and so she uses this example of uh, okay you're gonna make breakfast right that's a big kind of big thing it could be a lot of things but what if I said I'm going to um, open the fridge I'm going to pull out the eggs I'm going to break the, I'm going to get out in a little dish. I'm going to break the eggs into the little dish. I'm going to pour them into another bowl and, um, and whatever, you know, mix them up with a fork because I'm making scrambled eggs. And then I'm going to heat up oil or butter or whatever in a pan. When that heat, you know, in a minute after it's hot, then I'm going to put the eggs in and I'm going to stir, right? That's a lot more steps than, Hey, make breakfast. And to me, that, is um so that was so helpful like i know there's all those steps some of those things though i don't know i don't know how many steps go into you know setting up an etsy etsy store i do but yeah. pretend like you don't but like I, i'm running into a problem on my website that i would never give myself 15 minutes to fix i'm going to give myself you know, an hour and a half and then maybe another hour and a half the next day because I don't know if I'm going to get it because there's research, there's, do you know what I mean? Yes. And Mara says, like you, I have a hard time figuring out my purpose. I am my last client. Yes. Okay. I am feeling for you right now. Okay. So Bear says he's dreaming mixed with action, maybe too little action. So maybe you... If you're in that dream stage and you really get excited and you do it, then you need to break down to little things. So I think little Larry Johnny said he is just tired at the end of the day. So what if you just give yourself one thing to do, maybe at the end of the day, but maybe you get up early and you do those things. I don't know. you got to figure out a, a way to get through it. And on a podcast I was listening to, I believe it was Creative Pep Talk or it was Honest Designers. I can't remember. I was listening to both of them this morning. They were talking about if you have um, 10 steps you can take in a year and um, you have 10 different directions, you're not going to get very far in any direction if you just take one. But if you focus and say take all 10 steps in that one area to that one focused niche thing, learning it or getting something, that that will get you further. So you may have four things that you're really interested in, but for the next three months, you're going to really focus on just one and, and knock it down. Yeah. It, I was, a, he, I just love him. I want to meet him. So I'm going to do that. That'll be on my list. Contact Andy. We'll see. I can always ask. I would love to have him on anyway. So then Austin, he says mainly dreaming, planning, exploring, until the last minute, then my I bust my butt to pull something off. Yes, I do know you, but you don't actually, it doesn't always feel like that. But sometimes it's like that's the dreaming, that's the planning, that's the designing that people do. Um, they're doing a lot of that in that format. Anyway, she says that, so the top two is like block one, block two. And she says that's like the ideal world. So I don't know why the ideal world has tragedy and opportunity, but whatever, I guess there's some sort of catalyst, right? That makes you go through, I read it as a grieving process, but whatever. I don't know why that's ideal. <clears throat> so clearly I misread something, but that's what I got out of it. And then the bottom two were the real world. And then if you do one and four, which is opportunities and the tragedy or the promised land, which, you know, not, not there yet. She says, those are um, small moves. You make small moves in quadrant four and small moves in quadrant one. And then in quadrant two and three, dreaming and then the action, that's where you take make big moves. But I think you're, the big moves, they take longer. Step two and step three take longer. 
but you're kind of feeling like where where it fits. And Mara, to be honest, I have feel like I've figured out the next step for me. All right, let me read what David says. David says, I'm in that purpose spot lately myself. The half year of physical ther therapy and not being able to work on stuff at the end of last year still has me struggling. Man, I can imagine to get back. And it's getting to be about a year since I've completed physical therapy. I've been reevaluating a lot of what I was doing and still trying to figure out the next steps, to be honest. So I released this course that was about social media to my audience in I think 2014. Okay. Long time ago. And I sent out one email and that was it. Nobody bought. So I was like, I mean, I was crushed. Now my sister's like, Diane, how many emails do you not get? Do you not open a day? And I'm like, I don't know. I get like 200 emails. I probably don't open a hundred of them. You know, like I just delete, delete. And these are from my friends too. You know, like I get emails from people who I really follow, but I just don't have time to, to read them. She's like, well, do you think maybe somebody's doing that with you? And I'm like, yeah, probably a lot of people. And she's like, then you got to send it out more than once. But I was so, I was like, oh no, it's just not perfect. You know, it's not, um, you know, when people are like, oh, I just published. It's, it doesn't have to be, you know, hit print, not perfect or something, you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I know, I mean, I spent money. I, um, made all these videos, but I realized as I kind of looked back, clearly it's been four years. I looked back and I was like, mm, it could have been better. could have been more succinct. So Austin knows me, Paige knows me real well. Cause I was your teacher and I can be kind of like real flighty and maybe not flighty, but I get off track real easy, which I think helps to some extent in the creative world, but it doesn't really help when I'm trying to teach people something. So it may be as frustrating as a student in my class. You guys can uh, respond in the comments. But I think when you're trying to figure out what you're doing, like where David is, it, it feels like I should be a lot further. And so I felt really ashamed that nobody bought. I mean, I, I was, uh, I, I did have some people go through the course and I, I got great feedback. Um, I, I got feedback on things I needed to change. It wasn't like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Changed my life. I got some things that were like that. My friend Jeremy did that, did it remotely. So he hadn't ever, um, he wasn't with me doing it, but then I had some students in my class do it. And then I taught a class with that information. All, I mean, I wrote like a, a book, you know, kind of going through it. So I'm teaching it again and I'm revising it and I'm going to simplify it down. Um, I had this big long thing and it was required a lot of work from me to analyze all this stuff. And I realized this wasn't really scalable and it was really difficult for me to do that. I think it was good to answer the questions for you as a person, but I think it has to have some sort of, um, activity for you to, you know, number things up or, or figure things out or just be able to, Hey, you know, Oh yeah. Why that does. Oh, maybe that does connect or something. So when that didn't go, I felt super ashamed, unsuccessful. I was like, man, I'm a teacher and I can't even teach this. Like, and then I thought about it, uh, um, meeting Chris Doe and he was like, you know, I don't, I don't know everything that I'm teaching. I'm just teaching what I'm learning. And I think that that's really important to be able to do. So I was like, you know, what? I, I agree with that. I think that that's something that I could do as well. So I did this, I went to this conference and I gave two talks and one was kind of the be the beaver, you know, beavers and designers and analogies and things like that, more motivational, funny. And then one was uh, about leadership and it was not funny. You know, like I felt bad for the people who came to the first one and were expecting to laugh again a lot. I was like, this one's not funny, you know, and I haven't shared that. That is going to be in content that I'm going to share with the patron patrons on Patreon because I'm getting it done today. I'm finishing it. It will launch. I has to go through some review process. I don't know how that long that takes, but probably they take tomorrow off too. But anyway, so it will be done by the end of the week. I really wanted it done today, but I kept putting things 
in front of it. But I'm not, I'm really trying to do better about that. Anyway, um, so with courses or maybe there's something that you wanted to do. David was in physical therapy. Maybe he thought he would be further in his physical journey than he is. Um, I just think you just got to keep walking. You got to keep trying one step after another, but in that direction. So don't get off track. So I really liked what Andy said was, you know, stay, keep going, even when it gets hard, because that's when, when it gets hard is where the hero's journey is. And so she even talks about Martha Beck even talks about the hero's journey in quadrant three, the action. There's going to be times where you just want to stop. And I've thought about this over and over. And whenever I've talked to people or tried to encourage people about having a podcast and they, I always say, give it five years, make a commitment to your audience and to you for at least five years. And they're always like, whoa. And I mean, one guy like drew a picture of, I was on a podcast with other podcasters and I said, that was my one piece of advice because it kept me in the game. When it got hard, I had made a commitment to y'all. I had made a commitment to myself. I remember my aunt said, um, who's making you do this? And I'm like, me? Like, is that unheard of? Like, to, I, I don't know. Like, I think that that's good. I can make a commitment to myself or to other people and do it, even though it's not, you know, making, um, it, it was making a significant difference. Design recharge has made a significant dif difference in my design. I think it's made a significant difference in my students. It just what I'm able to learn and teach them. And so now I'm just trying to compile that. So I have a mastermind group. And my mastermind group has, so Mara, man, I'm just like hitting when, when you wrote that, oh, like I'm trying to figure out what your purpose, you said, I'm having a hard time finding out my purpose. And I feel like our purpose changes, but there are some things that just don't go away. Have you ever had that? There's like that, that gnawing thing that you're like, mm, man, I should really get back to knitting. You know, maybe it was just, you really like to knit and you knitted really a lot, you know, a couple of years. I mean, whatever it is, knitting, fill in the blank where I'm saying knitting. And then you're like, no, I need to do this. I need, or, or maybe it's working with a dog shelter or maybe it's doing, um, for me, the thing that would not release is the thing of teaching. And I'm like, I just, I mean, obviously, clearly I do that for a living, but I wanted to be able to do it to a a greater audience and for two reasons. One, I think that there's something, uh, a unique perspective that I have that I can share and hopefully encourage because I think that there's people out there like me that maybe don't know everything and we're trying to learn it and we're trying to learn it from other people and we need them in digestible, uh, uh, you know, chunks. So, and they're, we're trying to run a business, we're trying to have a job, we're trying to have a family, we're trying to do all these things, right? And we get tired, like little Johnny, or little Larry Johnny said, he's tired at the end of the day. So how do, how do we move forward? But for me, Design Recharge has always been about hope, like, oh, I bring on Dustin and he says he made $137,000 his first year, you know? I'm like, that's hope, that we, I'm selling hope. I'm like giving you hope. If you keep doing, if you keep trying and you've tested it and you pivot when you need to pivot, then you can be there too. I can be there. I'm hoping, right? We can, we can get there together. And hopefully this is just a way for us to, to share this and encourage and be together. So here's something, here's some things that I've learned from other podcasts. So one podcast that I listen to a lot is, um, Story Brand podcast. Me and Austin talk about this a lot. This is Donald Miller. He was a writer, just a writer for a long time. And now he's doing, he's really helping businesses write their stories. And he kind of gives designers kind of a bad rap. I feel like we, um, we need to do better and we need to be better in not just making things pretty. We really need to have that structure behind us. And I think a lot of us have that. And I think you guys that are here have that because you, you care about more than just making it pretty. So he talked about, he had a podcast and I know I've mentioned it, but it's been a while. 
and I feel like Andy Miller, Andy uh, talks about things regularly and he's like, I know I've said this before and he does say it a lot, but repetition is really important for us to learn. Um, <laughs> Austin said, you pack a lot of information into a short amount of time, which is called being efficient. It, I describe your teaching as buying in bulk at Costco. Okay, thanks. I, I will use that analogy. Thanks. I think that's a compliment. Um, Amber laughed. So how uh, he had somebody on that had taught him about drinking water and that our brains are, were, are made up of 80% water. But how much are you drinking water? So I'm asking this. I want this to be something that you're going to put in the chat for me, if you don't mind. I want you to write down a number of how many ounces of water you drink a day. So Michael, 80. Way to go, buddy. That's awesome. 32. Bear, you need to up it probably. Right? I 60 to 80. Depends on the day. Amber, 20, uh, between 40 and 60 a day, depending page. Uh, Bear says he agrees he needs to drink more. 32 is pretty good. I drink like two of these 32 ounce things before noon usually. Man, and I, ha I mean, if you've been in classes with me, um, I have to go to the bathroom a lot. Anyway, there's something in my mouth. No one like you ate lunch and then something to win the way back. Anyway, Grody, sorry. So sorry. Thank goodness I'm here alone. So Patricia says 40 to 50-ish ounces she drinks. Supposed to be half our weight in ounces apparently. But this is better drinking water, especially when you're trying to be creative or you're trying to do that, that action, that step that you are having trouble doing. Drinking more water will give you more energy than an uh, energy drink then caffeine, it is better because you're feeding, you're letting that brain be in that water. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it, it's, it's different. I thought, you know, for us at, in class, I was like, man, it would be really cool if we could, you know, rent one of those water, you know, have people come and fill it and give our students water. And I think, wow, you know, maybe they would drink more or maybe that would be what I – said, hey, at the end of this class, to get a credit for participation, you need to drink 32 ounces by the end in two hours or three hours. Um, so Austin says it's like running on um, premium gas. I think you've got to figure out what I like to drink out of a straw. So my water bottle has a straw. I don't like, I, I guess I'm not very coordinated and I lift it up if it's like a, just a regular Nalgene bottle and it just water goes all over my face. So good. I'm glad David. So you, I want you to do a test just to see, now think about it. Think about this as this is sometimes the most stressful part of the year, right? Thanksgiving to Christmas or to the end of the year. It's stressful. Family stress, there's money stress, right? All kinds of things. So I want to me and you both to challenge if we could do at least 64 ounces a day for the next month or month and 10 days, right? Because that would be the 20th well, 21st, that would, that would be it. So for 40 days, the next 40, I didn't even realize it would be 40. But anyway, 40 days, let's commit to each other. And you know, if you mess up, no big deal, right? But that's how I'm going to start these next few, these next three weeks. I just want you to write your, your number of um, ounces. Now, here's the other thing. I did this in my class. This was what was so bizarre. You know, like when you're, so I read a lot of these uh, studies, psychology studies or physical studies or something, and then to see it in action. So I had just graded a project. <laughs> so I just graded the project. Some were amazing. Some were like, I don't think this is the right major for you. But um, so I had them and I had, I would, we did this in class, this little, it's three, three things, water and two other things that we're going to get to. So I had a, I gave them all the little sheets of paper and I said, I want you to be able to, I want to be able to see it from across the room, what number you put up. The kids who had like eight ounces, 
that was at eight ounces of water a day. They made less, they made a poorer grade. And to me, I was like, oh, this is it, people. Like, I am seeing it in action. I see the people who were drinking more water. They were making better grades. They were making better design decisions. They were doing better research. They were, and you know, I don't think that drinking water has to do with being smart, right? Like, I don't think or, or being acclimated to being a better designer. But my goodness, you can be a better designer if you drink more water. Now, here's the two other things. Because I've been pulling these things together. I'm trying always to figure out could be, could be about being disciplined, but I don't think I'm super disciplined. Now, here's where it sucks. The next question I asked, and I want you to write it in the chat as well. How many hours per week do you play? Now, that could be any kind of play. What If you think of playing as going outside and playing a sport or um, playing a video game or reading a book, you know, playing, whatever play is, messing up, drawing. Um, it could be playing with your kids, like playing, um, I don't know what people play with their kids, Legos or whatever, right? Anything. How many hours a week do you play? If you could answer in the chat. Sometime today. This is audio for some people. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, so little Larry Johnny, he, how many kids do you have? And I don't know if I need to call you Larry or Johnny or Lil or just the whole thing. So I'm just calling you the whole thing. So little Larry Johnny said four hours. Paige said, oh, I have no idea to be honest. Patricia said seven, maybe. David says it depends on the week. Jacob said four. Carly said 10. Way to go, Carly. Mara said 10. Little Larry Johnny said he had two kids. And little Larry's, he's, I'm going to call him little Larry. Amber said six. Um, Bear said, okay, David said he just got a new video game, so easily 10. Bear said, this is tough, maybe a minimum of 10. And Carly said she's good at playing. Yes, you are. So think about it. In a week, you know, you have, if you break up your day, eight hours of work, eight hours of sleep, you have eight hours of something else, right? Cleaning, eating, taking a shower, watching TV, whatever else you do, right? Austin says 20 a week. That's pretty good. But he says he's a procrastinator. But see, I actually don't think that playing isn't necessarily a procrastination tool. This is, it's actually good to play. I wrote a zero down. I don't play very much. I think I hit that wall and I don't keep going. So to me, this is where one thing I'm really going to work on. The study, I think it was from, um, oh, poo, I don't remember. I think it was from that Sean Kirby Danton um, brain something. It's hidden, hidden, hidden brain podcast. Clearly, I need more water today. I'm really chapped too. That's another clue. If your lips are chapped, that means that you are, um, that's fine, Bear. Counting, drool, <laughs> drooling, not drooling, doodling, drawing, watching TV. That's fine. That's all play. I'm not counting TV as play because I think of it as it's such a, it engrosses me, um, but it's not a real active. So it doesn't require, like a video game still requires you to do something. You know, you, you can't just be watching. Yeah, it's, it's lean back, relax time. So I'm not considering TV play, but play would be doing, having some sort of active role, doing something where you're. Uh, where you're not, not just consuming. Exactly. Um, okay. <laughs> Mara says she usually falls asleep. So I don't know how many hours. We're not going to do sleep. Maybe next time we'll put sleep in. But I found in that thing the other day, and Sean Kirby on Hidden Brain, he they talked about how play with creativity really allowed you to 
be more creative. So it's just because you're doing things, you're, you're trying new things. And you may be trying new things in your job a lot, like playing. I mean, a lot of what we do is play, right? We're like, well, we'll see if this works this week on social media, or we'll see if this works for this client in their marketing, whatever we're doing. So a lot of stuff we do is play, but really being okay with just making messes and just playing, getting our brain doing something else that's maybe not necessarily with design. But for some of us that aren't really drawing a ton at work, doodling, something like that, I think is really important. I need to do better at it. The last one that I want to talk about and get you to respond to is how much time are you in nature? Now, that means outside, somebody was like in my class, they were like, does it count if we're outside smoking? Absolutely because you're outside. So I want to know how many hours per week are you outside? Are you committed to being outside or are you spending outside on a regular week? Okay. So let me tell you about this study while you guys pull in your numbers. I think I might've told you all this already, but it was like shocking. And I've told a lot of people this, but it was again on hidden brain with Sean Kirby Dunt and I don't know, that's how you say his name or anything, but I need to probably write hidden brain down. I'll try to get that, um, uh, those ones. Anyway, and Donald Miller. I'm making myself No, It's easier when I'm not talking all the time. I can make notes like crazy, but it's sort of looking like chicken scratch right now. So they did a study about people's health where they had, um, low income housing in the city and low income housing in the city and in the courtyard or around the low income housing, there were trees and grass and things like that. Okay. In the courtyard and in the surrounding same low income housing, same city, just a different spot. They had concreted over the courtyard where there was green grass and stuff at some point. And around the building, there was no, there was also just concrete. There was nothing. There was more prescription drugs being filled on a regular basis for the concreted one than there were for the people who saw more green and experienced more green on a regular basis. So nature, more nature outside. Obviously, this is a, it's extreme. I, I, you may or may not live in the middle of a city, right, with concreted everything. But so here's what some numbers are coming in. Um, people are saying not enough, basically none. Mara said 15. Way to go, Mara. Um, David said like three hours. I said four for me because that's minimum is what I'm spending with my dog. I walk my dog 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night um, on days that I, ha or I try to, on days that um, I don't have to come into the office. Um, little, little Larry said, uh, depends on the time of the year. Absolutely. Yeah in Minnesota for sure. So summer, um, is going to be 20 winter is going to be 10. That's still a, a good bit, right? And you have kids. So, um, so then Jacob said 14 way to go, buddy, man. That's awesome. Um, uh, bear said embarrassingly little these days going to change that. So I think if you have three things to do between now and even though it's super, super, um, winter, you know, I don't know how it is in Portugal, but I th think it's, you're above the equator. So it's wintry, right? Jacob. Um, I would challenge you one to play more, whatever that means. Try to get maybe more than four hours a week. If you're in the 10, I think that's good. Like Carly is doing something right. She's getting it and she's playing, but you should see her characters. If you, Carly, plop up your, uh, Instagram handle again. And Carly says 20 in the summer, three in the winter. And she's in Cleveland. Um, Patricia says, huh? Envy smokers sometimes since they get, since they get out two to three, 20 minute walks a day, four hours per four hour hike, two to three times a month. Also my play and my spiritual thing. Absolutely. I'm totally with you, Patricia. So and that I, that count I do count some play is going to be outside and that's fine. So at the Carly West, you cannot come. That's her 
Instagram handle, K-A-R-L-Y-W-E-S-T, the Carly West. I want you to look at her characters. To me, looking at her characters, you can see she's playing. She's coming up with all these little characters and all these scenes. She makes these things and then she'll video them doing different things. To me, that is, uh, I see that as a result of her play. Carly is getting out more in the winter, but less in the, in the summer. So maybe she's in those quadrants. Maybe that play quadrant is sort of like the dream quadrant. Maybe then, you know, I'm not, I just think that if you're better in the play, in the dreaming, you do need action. Absolutely. You have to have action. But if you're better in that, if you give yourself time to play, give yourself time. I mean, these people were having less prescriptions than people in the, the, where it's still low income housing. They're still stressed about money, but they have green around them. So we need, and it's not just looking at it from a window. I think we need to experience it. So I think it, it would be good to test this, right? So maybe little Larry, you could do this. You could test, like get like a nature sound thing and play that in the winter when you can't really experience, but maybe the sound would be helpful. I, I think I'm going to try that this, um, this winter. Not that it's really that cold here, but um, Austin says he gets out as much as possible um, the, when the weather's nice, probably 15 hours a week. I have a lot of outdoor hobbies though, but maybe that is one of the things that keeps you healthy creatively and it keeps you healthy mentally. Um, maybe helps your not your stress level, not, um, not go, you know, we just got to hack it some ways. Little Larry, I think he said the, uh, nature sound sounds nice. I do think our, our, the audio stuff, there was uh, my friend who's a therapist She's not my therapist. She's my friend growing up. She probably could be my therapist, but, but anyway, her name's Amy Bryant. She's in Atlanta. She has bought this tool. I cannot stand to hear people chew. Okay. If you guys are ever around me and you're like eating Doritos, I will have to leave the room. I just can't stand it. There is a, it's like a mental disorder or something, you know, whatever. There's a disorder for everything. She says, if you play the sound for 30 minutes, now this could be a hack too, but I mean, she's like a trained professional. She, and, and it helps with other things as well, but this is just one of the things that it helps with helps people who can't stand to hear people chew. Now you can, you can stand to hear them. If you do this thing for a week, you listen to this tone for like maybe 15 or maybe it's an hour. I can't remember. I was like, send it to me. I will do it. To me, it's like, I don't think about how sound affects, but think about it. When we're doing a design piece and we add music to it, it totally changes it. Did you know that audio is way more important than video quality? Like my video quality is not that great, right? You can see it's kind of blurry. I don't know. It looks super tight up here, right? The really, really tight, but I cannot stay focused. I don't know if it's because my background is so busy. I don't know. I think my background is great. But anyway, misophonia. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Anyway, um, let me just read you guys some of the chats. There are some of the chats. Whatever. The chat. Um, Carly said she does play. She, d I do need to work on more action. Got play covered though. So maybe it's taking action steps, smaller, breaking them down, action steps. I'd love to hear how it goes. Um, uh, Bear says, my takeaway is I need to stand the forest. <laughs> he says, I need to take, my takeaway is I need to stand in the forest while guzzling water, which actually sounds good. Yes. And then you have many trees to pee on. And then little Larry says, I sat in the wood two weekends in a row hunting. I sat with my eyes closed listening and it was very therapeutic. I actually, I'm, it's totally a thing. I think we overlook um, sound a lot, but really it's way more important to how we, you know, think about a movie, think about black and white talk, uh, not, not talkies, right? Before there were any audio there was not this huge rush, but as soon as you add that other element, I think it makes a huge difference. So maybe we could try that as a, um, 
maybe you get a rain CD then, Carly. Maybe that's a focus thing for you. I can't listen to books or, or listen to music really while I'm, I'm working because I, I get really distracted easily. Um, but maybe you don't want to sleep when you're doing it, but maybe, maybe those things would help us like help us focus or maybe we just need to, um, to, I, you know, bear, he says he's a big proponent of quiet times. I think I, I ride in the car. I don't listen to anything sometimes and it's just quiet. I'm just, man, it's busy in my head though. Right. So, you know, whatever that is. So anyway, here, those are the, the three things I want you to work on that I'm, well, you don't have to work on them, but I'm going to work on them. And I saw that my students, the not, the ones that didn't perform well on the slash project, which was a big project, it had multiple pieces to it. They were not drinking enough water and they didn't get outside. So there was one kid in there who got outside like 32 hours. He played and gets outside. So he kind of got to, he kind of got to do a Patricia, got to use those uh, together and he was doing really well. So I, and I don't feel like he's not putting the time in, you know, to do his work. So he's not uh, being lazy. So Hopefully, if you noticed on the promos, it had a little like a circle thing. The tab was on the action. The tab is on block three because I need the things that I don't want to do. I need to start breaking into little smaller steps. So I did the Patreon stuff today. I committed time. I also have to finish a website for a client this weekend. And I'm going to do that and I'm going to get it done. And I'm just going to break it down into pieces even though I don't have any content for the website, but I'm going to go ahead and build it. It'll be lorem ipsum up. What do y'all do when you're doing a website for somebody and they haven't given you content? What, what do you do? Do you lorem ipsum? Do you make up stuff? And nobody, nobody makes websites. What are you talking about, Diane? Bit of both. Um, Paige says, so she says, making self-care a priority bleeds into other parts of your life. I also think, <laughs> Michael says, uh, just Laura Mipsum. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, it's almost time to go. So I want to tell you, so I the Patreon hasn't been announced, but I will send you an email over the weekend. Just I just want you to know how much I uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, Patricia, I met at that... Um, uh, conference where I did the leadership talk where it was the funny one was in the morning and then the not so funny one was I still think the fun not the leadership one was still okay right Patricia it was it was it was okay content I mean I really worked on it and that's some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing is creating that took me like I'd say 80 hours to make which you're thinking oh but I read a lot of books and I did a lot of other research in making that that content. And those are some of the things that those are some of the videos <laughs> you saw the funny miss the other. Okay. That's good. Um, it wasn't this funny. Um, getting content out. Um, the Patreon will allow me to do that. So I know there's nothing for me to share verbally right now, but there will be Patreon black Friday, hopefully unless these people at Patreon take forever, but it'll at least be up next week. There are multiple tiers there's a dollar tier, man, I will be happy with anything. Uh, it will just allow me to help um, push stuff out. But I'm going to do what Dustin's doing, and I'm going to release courses through the Patreon. Um, so what that means is a course that I would maybe teach, and I, I'm creating videos for, for maybe my students um, that I've already created videos for, I will now be putting up. So it's kind of like a presentation or a, a something. And then one of the tiers has us doing a project three times a year, right? And then we come together and instead of just doing them like this, we would have not rapid recharge, but we would do um, a group meetup, which we've done a couple times, which I really have liked. Then that way we all get to see each other and we get to know each other a little bit better. Y'all get to see each other. Um, I've seen some of you, but I'd love to see more of you. Um, not more of you, you know what I mean. I want to see your faces. 
um, on a regular basis. So, and it, even if you don't, this is totally, this helps me just this being doing design recharge helps my design. And I really appreciate you guys coming. Amy texted me. She's always here for like six years, but Amy texted me and she's like, I can't make it today because I'm in California. So I told her, I said, I really appreciated it. She always, you know, when she doesn't come, we notice for sure. Thank you, Bear. I, I'm, um, I'm just excited for these next steps because like Mara, Mara, I'm going to call you this weekend if you have time. I'm pretty sure I have your number on my phone. Um, but I feel like I found the next thing I'm supposed to do. And some of, so part of me being a, not a millennial, I guess, a Gen Xer is that we don't ask for help. And so that the Patreon for so long was, I feel fine being a patron for somebody else. I feel like I'm helping. I feel like I'm part of the community, but I, I felt like, Oh, nobody will feel like that here. Or I don't know what I, so I'm fine doing this now. I, I'm, I'm going to be releasing like Dustin does. I'm going to be releasing courses. So you'll get the whole course. Now granted you could go through the whole course in one month and then not, uh, pay anymore, which is fine, but then you'll have access to all these different courses that I'm, that I'm going to release. And so I'm pretty excited about that part. And you'll still like, there will still be a ways if you don't want to be a patron, you could still buy the course, but I will be releasing the social media thing, a course more focused and it has goals. There's sheets, there's lots of stuff to fill out. And again, you'll be doing it on your own, but then we'll be doing it together. Um, uh, have these meetups on a regular kind of, kind of basis where it won't be this link. It'll be a different link. And then you'll be able to see your faces. And Michael knows because we do Bible studies. So then it's just a whole bunch of people. We have up to 50 people at once. Um, if I need more than that, I can, I can pay for that. But uh, anyway, I just, I'm super thankful. Super thankful for getting through the yuck in the, in the hero's journey or in that section of my life and just keeping going instead of just taking one step and then turning and going two steps in another direction. So I'm excited too. So the next for me, Mara, what I, I was talking to my mastermind group. I know I started talking about this a while ago. I was talking to my mastermind group and I said, I wanted to do, uh, this is this thing. And uh, I had called it the igniter series. I'm just going to get this piece of paper and show you really fast. I mean, it's going to be like really quick. Um, this, I think I did in two years ago. So I have, I had these ideas, you know, and it hasn't left me. So always I feel like God just kept putting this on my heart and he didn't let me uh, get, get over this. And so I had a friend of mine who's a instructional designer. Um, he helped me. Oh, this, yeah. Yeah. Two years ago. Look, May two. Oh, can you see that? 2006, May 27th. 22nd 2016 and it's Fred Baker he's so he's still hopefully will help me um, anyway he did a bunch of work I did a bunch of work these are this is my I mean I met with this girl she's gonna be on December 12th her name's Natalie callback you know when you like say if I was a a, a really famous knitter you know and like not me, but I met a really famous knitter. And like, if you were in the knitting world, you totally would be like, oh my gosh, it's blah, blah, right? Now the rest of the people don't know who blah, blah is, you know, like your mom's proud of you, but the rest of the people in the world really don't know that you're anything, right? Uh, it's like a famous orthodontist, you know? I don't know any. Well, I, Suzanne's dad's a famous orthodontist. Here's my, these are the ideas and I already have people. These, these are just um, some of the things that I'm going to be making videos of. Now I have a whole nother, I have a whole nother, um, a whole nother binder that's full of these video ideas. So now I actually am going to be able to do it and I'm committing to it. So I already have the first one booked, the first one, and it's going to be released at, so how this, this girl does creative jumpstart, which I'm tell you guys about really fast now. But it's, uh, I think it's five days a week you get a video access, 10 to 12 to 18 minutes long. And it's somebody, it's over the, uh, over the top and you're watching them 
make something, a creative process. Well, I didn't really want to do that because that's not really what we do on Design Recharge. But what I think we do is kind of break down things that were are in our business that will help us do better. Whether because I think you know we just don't make that much money sometimes, and I would love for us to make more money. But I would love for us to make more money doing these fun things that we want to do. And I think we can, but sometimes we get lost in either the dream dream quadrant or we get lost just doing busy work like me, right? So this Igniter series, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about this Igniter. I don't know. Anyway, so my friend Jody, who's also going to be on, but in February in the Love on Designers Month, she was like, Diane, you're a gold digger. And I was like, what? Gold digger? Not that's not a compliment. You know, I mean, my husband's 12 years older, but I didn't marry him for his money. Um, which that was supposed to be funny. It's really hard to hear you laughing when you're not here with me, but hopefully, uh, you know, still no one saying anything in the chat. Clearly terrible joke. Thank you. Both of you, the two people. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Patricia said knee slapping laughter and bear and Carly both said, <laughs> Ha ha ha. And Austin said peed himself. Ha ha. I know you're joking now, Austin. Anyway, so gold digger for her. And this was like, so, um, it really touched me. I've known Jody since I, since 1999, since before then we worked in Denver together and she's super creative. Can't wait for you guys to meet her. But she said I was a gold digger because I can, what other people see as dirt I'm seeing as gold and I can find these nuggets in people. And I feel like Mara, that was like, I, this is what I've done. All of these things are like people. It's like, I have people. Oh, that's Bob Ewing. That's Mike. That's Octavius. That's Noah. That's Micah. That's Mina. You know, I have all these people kind of figured out who I want to talk about these things. And even with Natalie, who's coming on in two weeks, three weeks, she used to be a paralegal. Well, one of the things that makes her really good at the things she does now, which is like craft, making craft products. Like if you go to Hobby Lobby or you go to Michael's, you might see something she's made, which I think is amazing. But I think that's one of her superpowers is the, the ability to understand these contracts and know and, and really um, think about with creative jumpstart, not having certain people on certain weeks. So it's planning so that nobody kind of, she, she has really big empathy for these businesses. And I'm just like, wow, this is terrific. Like, this is what makes you really good at this. So this has not left me for two years. And so I'm going back to it. So I am recording the first episode in January. And it's going to, that one's going to be about, um, so you might be somebody that I contact because I think you have something that I want you to share. And so I, I am going to be contacting a bunch of people and, um, I'm going to, and it, it's, they'll have themes. And so I'll put you in a week with someone else. And right now, I don't know how long this is going to be, but this to me is exciting and finding a purpose and, Man, Mara, when I felt like I was a loser because that class, the other course didn't make. I mean, my sister made me feel better. She's like, oh, well, how many, you know, how many times did you, did you try to tell people about it? And I'm like, once. So that made me feel better too. But I also think, you know, it's, it's about keep digging. And, you know, I finished that Martha Beck book, the um, Finding Your Own North Star, I started it in 1999 and I just finished it. Like that's 19 years, right? That's a long time to be reading one book. Clearly it didn't, you know, I feel like books call to you at times, right? And anyway, I guess just don't give up. Just keep walking and listening to where, where you're supposed to go. So I'm excited. I'm really excited actually. And I'm super thankful for y'all. I'm thankful that you have listened to me for six years and you're on a journey with me. And I'm excited to share with you. So next week we have Brad Woodard. And if you aren't, aren't familiar with Brad, Brad has his own business and, called bravethewoods.com. 
And I can't wait to show you his illustration style. Love Brad. Absolutely, Bear. And Brad has some really neat insights as well. And him and his wife work together. She's kind of the business side and the writing. She's a writer. And then he does what he, she tells him to do, um, is what he says. And me too, Bear. I'm, I'm, I haven't done my illustration, but I'm trying. Um, me, uh, Dustin and Brad have a master class, and it's like mid-century illustration. And so me and Bear are both doing that. So Brad Woodard's going to be on next week. Really excited. The week after that is Alicia Cologne. She has a, she's an amazing photographer. She's a designer, but she fell in love with paper art, and she also fell in love with photography. And she has created um, products that are like mock-ups. Those are things that we need. She also has done a podcast as well. So we're going to be talking about staying creative. She's also a mom of three. She works part-time. She's worked full-time, part-time. She's uh, for Focus Labs in Savannah. And, and I love her. So I can't wait for you guys to uh, meet her if you don't know her already. And just to kind of dig into that. And then we have Natalie Kalbach, who is like the crafty uh, person. She's done workshops all over the world. And she's just, she quit her job as a paralegal to be an artist. And I just think that takes such guts. But she has insight. She really follows her gut on products that she's making and pitching. But she also really pitches. And I think, man, we could do this. We need to learn from her how she's maybe not being rejected, but she's just taken it as one other person. Like, you know, somebody said uh, one time that they needed, their goal was to get a hundred rejection letters in a year. I don't know if this was on a podcast I listened to or in a book. I can't remember. It might've been Andy J. Miller. You guys should listen to that pep, that creative pep talk if you don't. I mean, listen to both of us, maybe. Don't leave me to listen to him, but no, I'm just kidding. Listen to him. He's awesome. Um, but now I can't even freaking remember what I was um <laughs> off to get water back to work. See you later, Patricia. Um, I know it's guy gotta go. Uh you guys gotta go. Uh what was it? Oh, Booker Snot, I can't remember. Man, I got this like thing on my sweater. Oh well, I can't remember. This is where I shouldn't be reading the chat when I'm here alone. Um Oh, well, anybody, this is what it was like when I was, when I'm teaching these like page or whatever. Um, but anyway, so Natalie is going to talk to us about creative jumpstart, which I always do in January, which she does in January. And that's kind of what this thing I'm doing, the igniter series, which I don't know, maybe it's the gold digger series, but that's what we're, uh, one of those two, uh, that's what we're, her and I are going to be talking about that and how she goes out and, Oh, I know what it was. This one girl wanted to get a hundred rejection letters in a year, but she got so many acceptances that she didn't meet her goal, which I thought, Oh my goodness. I mean, really, obviously she's trying to get accepted, but she made that as a goal because you have to get rejected a lot of times to be, get accepted, but you have to get out there playing, right. To hit the ball in a home run. You gotta get, gotta be swinging. So I hope that you guys have a great, great Thanksgiving if you're in America. And Jacob, I hope you have a great Thursday. May, it's almost Thursday for you. So have a great Thursday. Have a great weekend. I don't know if Black Friday's uh, in Portugal, Jacob, but if it is, I'd love to know. I think that's weird, crazy that the whole world does a whole bunch of shopping on one day. Um, but thank you guys so much. Nikki, I'm so glad to see you always. You're like my longest um, friend that I don't haven't met, but um, I'm just super thankful. David, I'm, I am praying for you uh, with your, your physical stuff because, man, I hope that you can see how far you have come because last year, a year ago, you weren't even able to do what you're able to do now. So. All right, guys. And uh, if you want to uh, follow me, if you're listening, you can hit like on YouTube. You can follow me on does at Design Recharge on Instagram or Twitter. And next week you will be able to, which is probably now, will when this posts, you'll be able to 
support on Patreon, which I think mine is just going to be Diane Gibbs, but we'll see. Um, do a search on Patreon for me, Diane with one N, D I A N E Gibbs. Maybe that's why it could be Design Recharge. I hadn't hit save on that. Um, or recharging you. It'll be something. If you search for that, it'll do it. See you guys later.